What is up guys, this is PVM Vertigo and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. And well, today, to kick off this amazing series, number, uh, episode number 10 if I'm correct, we are going to launch a, a suborbital trajectory spacecraft. Well, we have not done that in a long time if you've been following this series. The last time we did that was like, what, episode 2 or 3? But... I was scrolling through the contracts and I saw that the reward was 600 or 500,000 or 450,000 funds. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't see in the preview window, but it, it's a large number. They're all the same large numbers. But, but we basically have to launch a toroidal aero spike, which cannot have anything mounted beneath it, which is why I have this wider type rocket instead of a normal stacked rocket. And we have to get it up to 70,000 meters, and then we can get 450,000 funds in, well, this took about, I don't know, like two minutes, so it's going to be very profitable. And now that I'm flying this thing, I kind of wish I had toroidal aerospikes in my normal space program, or my normal item list, because this seems like a good engine for a space plane, because, you know, it's small, it doesn't have a lot of mass, and it has a decent thrust-to-weight ratio. It's better than the rocket engines I was putting in my space planes earlier. But nevertheless, we are easily getting up there because we have launched like this many times before. And we have the power of, well, five toroidal aerospikes powering at once. We did use kind of like, not an asparagus staging, but we did use a fuel line. Because, you know, asparagus staging wasn't really needed in this. It, it'd be too much work for so little return. In fact, we probably could have just, instead of just uh, having a five core, we could have just had one big ol' stack, and we probably could have still done the same contract. Nevertheless, we ran the test, and we're just coming back down. And what my goal was, was to not only just get the contract, I wanted to see if I could soft land this thing like SpaceX. Because I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hyped for their attempted... Or they're, they're attempting a barge landing, a barge landing again on Sunday or Saturday. I can't remember which, but they're attempting one. And I can't land on a barge, but I sure can try to land on water. So that's what we're going to do. We have the parachute in just, just for backup, but if you're wondering why my engine is in the wrong stage and it's not the bottom one, because I right-clicked it and started it because I had it staged all weird, and that's one of my things. I have really bad staging techniques sometimes and things get out of order but for this one it was as easy as just a right click and a and activate engine it wasn't that bad we're getting down here we are oh we're skimming it up oh. yes we have succeeded the soft landing of this quite small spacecraft has worked and we actually got a little bit of science from that we got like I can't remember how much but it was enough to push us over the 300 mark and so of course I go to the research facility and pick out a thing to buy and I have these 300 um, tier 300 science tier ones that I could buy but I end up just going with the 160 tier science one because it it was cheaper and I kind of wanted the claw for you know client purposes for whatever we need it for because I might want to capture an asteroid in one of the coming episodes because you know having a pet asteroid is just gonna be the best thing ever anyway we're back out at the Ike base. That's just what it's called. Just called the Ike base, rather boringly. Could have called it like Supernova or something, or interstellar, or interplanetary rover thing. But no, it's just the Ike base because you know what it's doing? It's going to Ike. But before it can go to Ike, it needs to get to Duna. And before it gets to Duna, it needs to get a good encounter. And so what I did is I focused Duna. You can do that by double clicking the planet. And then I sort of worked out a equatorial or equatorial-ish orbit. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to get to Ike. In one shot, that is. Anyways, we're going back to the Raven probe. And we apparently have not paid attention to this for a long time because it missed its encounter. Or it went through the encounter. And, well... It got shot off on like not not a very weird orbit because it encountered like 21 million meters or so and it barely scathed the sphere of influence so it didn't really get pushed off that much but it got pushed off enough that 
if we try to encounter it again, we won't be able to lower the periapsis to the planet as much as we would like to. But we are going to still try to get this on the correct course, even though it has limited delta V. And I'm starting to question why I'm even flying this thing, because this thing doesn't have any scientific instruments. It's just proof of proof of science, because we need to prove to the Kerbals back home that they can get to Eve. They've been wondering about the purple thing in the sky for so long, they need to get here. But nevertheless, they are going off to Duna. They're just going to make a small little uh, maneuver to get closer to Duna, and then we'll be good. We'll be, we'll be all set. We don't have to change any of our velocity when we get there. It's really not that much. It's only 14 meters per second delta V. It's very easy. You just got to change your inclination a tiny little bit. And I'll be all set. We'll go off towards Ike. Fulfill our scientific and, well, frankly, capitalistic dreams. Get that. Get all those funds. So, with that maneuver done, we're just going to head off right towards Duna and make our maneuver there. And we actually lucked out. We um, encounter Ike on our, well, on our leaving part of our orbit. So we're going to be slower. And we don't have to slow down as much. Which is going to be really nice. So yeah, we're starting to speed up a little bit here. Coming in hot into Dunas. Well, not at this atmosphere because we are uh, above the atmosphere. We're not going to be doing any air braking today. We're just going to carry out the maneuver. Do a little bit of a... I can't remember if it's normal or anti-normal, but one of the two. And we're just going to encounter the moon so we can land there. Easy plan. And we are getting our periapsis on the far side of Ike so that we can slow down instead of speeding up. And right now, there's no periapsis because that means that we're going to crash right into it and we don't want to do that. So we're going to move it a little bit more. And there, perfect. So we just fast forwarded right now into our braking burn. So we're going to stop all, well not all of our velocity, but most of our velocity. And we are going to get into a 20 kilometer, 30 kilometer orbit. So that we can land in the right spot. So we have quite a lot of delta V still left in this uh, base here. So we can easily put this down on Ike. And we are getting, well we got some money there. See, so yeah, I remember the plan is to land our base on Ike and then we're going to detach the top portion, fly it home, and then we should be good. So we're just doing a little bit of maneuvering to make sure that it's all all right. But in the end, we finish our Ike orbital phase by Trans or making a transmission back home. That's what I'm trying to say. We're also doing some mystery goo experiments, all that crap, so that we can touch down without having any any regrets. Because our all our scientific stuff is on the base, so we won't be able to do any when flying back. So we're just gonna come around here. We're gonna skip on forwards because we need to find a good landing spot. So all we have to do now is choose a landing site. And we have found one. From knowledge of the moon, we know that uh, darker craters are usually lower lands. And if they're lower, that means they're a little bit flatter, and you know where I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. We're gonna land there. And hopefully it'll be stable. I mean this thing is kind of taller than it is wide, but it's wider than some of the landers we've made, so it should be stable. Alright, so we're just going to do a little bit of a correction burn. And we are getting dangerously close to Ike because we are, well, 6,000 meters away. Now, that's you know that's a lot because that's uh, 6 kilometers, but, I mean, in space terms, that's pretty close because we were just 21 million miles away before we corrected our burn to get a nice orbit. So that is very significant. And we are coming down, we, we're canceling our horizontal velocity and putting it all into vertical velocity. So that we can just do a nice little, uh, not a short, a long burn all the way down. The safe way. And I noticed that my solar panel is still sticking out. I need to put that away. Solar panel, get back, okay. There you go. 
And we are a lot closer. We are close to landing. Now this thing has four engines, and I'm surprised it's lasted this long because those are well, those are regular size tank or double size if you want to call it that. But this is pushing the habitation module pretty far. And this is the largest. Well, it was the largest rocket we've ever launched, and it has the highest amount of delta v. And we are touching down, touching down. I can see the shadow. And we are landed. Yes. Oh wait, no. Oh no. Yeah, oh, don't tip over. Don't tip over. Don't tip over. Yes. We have landed. And we are just reaping the benefits of this contract. Well, not. Oh, there it is. There it is. And that is 700 science straight to the facility and quite a lot of money too we're just going to deploy the solar panels so that this base can become permanent and then we're going to take our Kerbals out for a nice little stroll on Ike because you know that's, that's what they've been wanting to do for the past like what two and a half years so as we're getting this set up we're going to do a little bit of science because you know that's needed we're doing a temperature scan we're going to do a Wait, I forget that you can do crew reports out of habitation modules. I completely forgot about that. So we're just getting set up. The base is successful. We're just setting up to make sure that it won't tip over, it won't run out of power. We're making sure we got all the science we need before we head off. So the last thing we need to do before we head off is take Jebediah out for a stroll. Or should I say a fly? Because he's going to go out and recover a nice little surf uh, surface sample and an EVA report from the surface of Ike. He's also going to plant the flag because you know that it's very important for Kerbals. They're very imperialistic and well in one of my upcoming series of Kerbal Space Program if you're watching five months from now I may just do a video focused on their imperialistic ways. What I was thinking is that after this series is done which will still take like a month or two was to start up another KSP series but with mods and then I will take procedurally take over the Kerbin system with all my imperialistic colonization mods and all that and that's the goal so by all means after the series Kerbal Space Program will not be done so like if you would like to see that but anyways back to the spacecraft Jebediah is trying to get back to the capsule and the reason we're up there is because we can't exactly go into the capsule doors since there's already a person in there. So we're just going to have to stand on top of the rocket like that. <laughs> it's kind of messed up, but you, you got to do what you got to do. Okay, so I'm going to EVA him, but then I see, oh, you can transfer. And I'm like, what? Did they add a transfer? Because that is a lot nicer. So can I just click? Oh, yep, that's how you do it. So I didn't even have to fly this guy out here to get him back in. I could have just transferred him. Alright, so we are hopping into the capsule. Jebediah is ready to go home. He collected all the science. He added all the science into the capsule. And he is going to decouple his spacecraft soon. And then hopefully get up into orbit and then go back home later. That is after he collects the science because he forgot some of it. Don't, don't hit the solar panel please, Jebediah. Oh god, we got Kerbals sliding across the floor now. <laughs> oh gosh. Alright, so what Jebediah is going to do is he's going to fly around and look for all the different types of science. Because we need to return it to Kerbin in its fullest form. We don't want to transmit it. We want to return it um, by collecting it and putting it in the capsule. Because you can do that now. That was actually a few updates ago. And Jebediah really has to look out for those solar panels. Because those things are fragile. And as far as I know, you can't repair solar panels. And right now, I don't know what he's doing underneath the thing. My EVA skills are not up to par. Or, I, I mean, I mean Jebediah's EVA skills, not mine. So Jebediah is fulfilling his mission. He's just lollygagging, I think. I know what you're doing, Jebediah. You want to stay outside more. Of course you do, because you've been cooped up in that thing for like two and a half years by yourself. The other people get to have the nice little habitation module. Oh my gosh. 
and you just went flying. But he can recover because he knows how to use the jetpack better than anyone else that I know. So back in the capsule you go. As long as you don't fall across on or don't, don't get back there. There you go. Board. Alright, so we're going to decouple this thing now and we're going to be off to Kerbin, hopefully. So we're going to be off or have the decouple button right here and in three, two, oh, there it goes. And we're going to, oh no, that did not just happen. That did not just happen. No, 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 no. No. Okay, so we had a minor staging error on Ike. Oh, that's going to be an issue. <laughs> I don't even have the balls to quick save revert, so I'm just, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Oh well. So yeah, Jebediah, looks like you're going to be there for a long time. Hope you packed enough, enough uh, snacks in that little capsule of yours. Even though you can walk across to the habitation module and probably enjoy time, except for the fact that people won't let you in because there's four of them in there already. At least you fulfilled your contract. So we're going to hop back over to the Raven Probe. And we have our best hopes on this because we have periaps to slow enough so I think I just decided I'm just gonna time warp through the entire thing and just trust it but uh <laughs> what ends up happening is you know how Kerbal Space Program glitches out and time warps through the lower layers even when it's not supposed to yeah that just happened so um our probe's pretty much done it doesn't have enough Delta V to do anything else so we're gonna just have to kill it. I'm sorry, Raven Probe. I mean, you don't, you haven't really done anything, so you were just an experiment, but you fulfilled the experiment. You you proved that a space plane could launch an interplanetary mission. So anyways, rest in peace, Raven, and long live Ike Base, as long as we're not counting the top part, because we might have to send a rescue mission out there. However, even without getting the extra science, we still have the 700 for doing the surface contract, so we can still buy a couple of things. Or not buy, but research. Research is the correct term. So we're going to research a few things. Just a few things here, because we need the best possible combination. We can't research the higher ones, we have to do these ones, even though we probably could have afforded large rocket trees or possibly even large plane parts, but that's irrelevant because we need like, what, a million to, uh, I can't remember, it's, I think it's like two million or three million to upgrade the research center, and we don't have that right now. So we're going to have to cover that in future episodes. So basically, we have to, in the coming episodes, we need to send something to EVE, send a surface base to Minmus, and we also have to rescue the people on Ike. So that's a lot of tasks for the next, next uh, coming episode, so stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of action going on in this Kerbal Space Program world. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video where we crashed into stuff, broke stuff, and, well frankly, messed up a lot of stuff, but we still did it for science. Thank you for watching, this is PVM Vertigo. Peace out.